please, please. shall perish, but in his doom he shall spawn a score of mortal progeny. Chaos will be sown from their passage, so saith the wise Alondo. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I will explain everything as soon as there is time. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. In Cactus... In Cactus... child. Get out of here! is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. Oh, thou wanderer, stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man.
buffle headed. Hey, ya! Uh, it's me, Emmowen. Something troubling you? Must we be so insufferably charitable? Montalon, you are so aggravating! Tis disturbing to my demeanor! And the rivers run red! The goody goodies make me sick! Yes, O oh omnipresent authority figure. If a tree falls in the forest, I'll kill the bastard what done it. C calm yourself, dear. We must proceed c c carefully. Oh, my heart's really not in this. I don't want to seem uh, confrontational, but uh, could you be a little less, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, evil? Surface dwellers can be so stupid. Jalcales? Male, fetch me something to eat. I do not understand this mouse magic that makes me do your bidding. Please, don't disturb me while I plot to overthrow you. Good day, my lady. Fine day to you, sire. Such a fine day, to you, wouldn't you say? the visions are vivid indeed. Long have you walked, but now you find yourself back amidst the stones of Candlekeep. Your former home looms before you, but the gate is closed and barred. Over the walls there is a candle in your old room, but as the light goes out, the brick surrounding the window closes together. The very walls conspire to keep you at bay. A familiar voice startles you, though it is calm and caring. You cannot go back this way, child. You must go on. Gorion forms before you. And though his image should be comforting, it seems but a shade of his living self. He is dead in your dreams, as in life. The phantom of your foster father gestures toward the blackness of the wood, as though it should be inviting. Perhaps it is, in a way, but the traveling will be hard. As you think this, a smooth and obvious path becomes clear out of the corner of your eye. It seems meant for you, pulls at your very being, and promises to quickly lead you away from the life you once led. Perhaps this would be for the best, but it is a bit too convenient for your liking. You do not wish to dwell upon the loss you have endured, but neither should it be forgotten. Gorion smiles and fades away. The pull becomes a push, but you turn away. Steadfast in your new direction, the way is not quite as clear, but it is sure to be interesting nonetheless. A whisper follows as you stride away, something vestigial and sinister that you recognize, but yet have never heard. You will learn. You don't look back. With your hurried flight from Candlekeep barely behind you, the troubles facing the Sword Coast seem an unfamiliar blur to your fractured nerves. Gorion would not have you sit idle, however, and perhaps investigating local concerns will shed some light on your own predicament. How the iron shortage or the trouble in the Nashkill mines could possibly be linked to you, you have no idea. Camaraderie, adventure, and steel on steel. 
The stuff of legend. Right, Boo? You point, I punch. This group is especially hopeless today. This is worth it. Sorry, friend, but you've got a date down under. Oh, I can't really not in this. Forward, Mike! Ah!
Again, you disturb me. Malahe and Tezak have proven to be nothing more than puppets. The true master of this unfolding mystery continues to elude you. Someone has Who taken a very personal interest in seeking your death. Though why, you are not sure. Your search for answers continues, and the foreboding Cloakwood Forest is your next target. Time is up. I can take Drizzt with friend. both my arms tied behind my back. have found their way down to my lair. I am a man of my word.
come full circle. Duke Elton has asked that you travel back to Candlekeep, where you must spy upon the leaders of the Iron Throne. While it troubles you that such evil men now make use of the Great Library, and you wish the circumstances of your visit would be different, it will still be a pleasure to return to your former home. Someone disturbs me. Greetings, young one. I wonder. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Everything will be explained to you in time. Born every minute, and you are right on time. Step right up, step right up. Do it. 
death welcomes you. <laughs> ship sets its sails against the morning light, and you are off across the waves. The Sea of Swords allows your passage without incident, and in a scant amount of time, you are on to truly open waters. A score or more of days pass, but the aptly named trackless sea seems to stretch before you without end. The waters are calm, though the wind remains steady and sure. The merchant vessel your employer has chartered is a fine ship, but her crew is not accustomed to journeys so far off the established trade routes. The more superstitious among them speak of a great waterfall off the edge of Faroon, of a secret elven nation that scuttles all that dare come near, or even of island-sized turtles that eat whole ships. Such fancy weighs heavily on the minds of nervous sailors, and the mood aboard ship slowly turns. Tensions begin to mount, and rumors of mutiny threaten your resolve. It is a mixed blessing that all aboard are soon given a very real danger to occupy their thoughts. The storm comes without warning and hits with a fury that seems almost deliberate. Gale force winds toss the ship about like a cork, and it is all the crew can do to keep her afloat. Their efforts, though valiant, are ultimately futile. And when the mainmast splinters, you know the ship is lost. As the hull gives way, there is a glimpse of something in the distance, a steady illumination against the black of night. Grasping debris for flotation, you abandon the wreck and begin to swim under the heavy burden of your equipment. You head towards the glow, hoping it is not a sea wisp or some other nefarious trick of the eyes. You awake the next morning with a mouth full of sand. You are waterlogged, exhausted, and you have an aching pain that lets you know you are very much alive. The ship is so much kindling. There is no sign of the crew, but there do appear to be footprints in the sand. without incident, though the events on the isle you left behind continue to weigh heavily on your mind. On the surface, it would seem that you have succeeded in your mission and found the remnants of the legendary Baldurin's ship, if not the ultimate fate of the man himself. 
The cost of this information was high, however, both for you and for the island's inhabitants. Aside from their missing chieftain, they will never leave their island home, though likely this is for the best of all concerned. You have left with your life, and a rich reward awaits your return to the mainland. Mendes will be waiting to hear of your triumph, and it is quite a tale you have to tell. Wait one moment. That is not in your power to decide. Shut up! Let Servox speak! Your worthless no! lives end here. I'm waiting. No! Run as you will. You cannot hide forever. Your worthless lives end here. Scream. Scream for mercy. until he was dead. <laughs> You sleep hunted by all, and wake in a dream hunted by one. Tonight you are the monster everyone claims you are, the kobold scorned like a rodent. The ogre that children fear comes in the night. The mobs and their torches now come for you, counting you among the creatures you once did hunt. Or so someone would have you believe. Once again you hear the voice, a voice that now makes no secret of its origins. It speaks of destiny and nature, and of evil's bred in the bone. It says you will never be free of the mob, that they will hunt you for what you are. Murder and death run through your heart, and accepting that will supposedly give you power. The essence of ball within you cannot be ignored. But you have not ignored it. You realize that from the first you have fought the very blood in your veins, fought dagger and claw for each victory, and ultimately, you have triumphed. With righteous will, you have turned the dark forces within you to good purpose. Whatever the foundation of your being, you have remade yourself in your own image. Amidst threats it does not yet know are empty, the voice tries to play upon your doubts, but finds none. As you stare unwavering, the presence grows weaker and weaker. As it fades from your mind, 
one warning does stand out amidst the din. It speaks of others that will listen where you have not, others that will embrace what you have rejected, and others that will be your death. This describes but one man, and you know of no other it could be. He who orchestrated your fall, deceived your comrades, and deserves all that your justice shall meet upon him, Saravak. He is a debt that must be paid to the whole of the Sword Coast. You awake sure of your cause and of what must be done. I'll do my best. You are indeed family. No other could have lived to oppose me in person. Of course, it will not matter in the end. Ultimately, I will prevail, and a new era will be born unto the realms. Face me! Face the new Lord of Murder! I will have your head! Your path is mine. The flames await. I have several names for you. None of them fit for polite company. I estimate fall from grace to be found attractive by the male sex of over 321,423 separate species. Give or take five. 
What a curious construct this is. You know what? We should get some female zombies to join this party, right, Chief? Updated my journal.